All right, so here's where it begins. This is literally how we defined variance. Uh, we came up with it because we were like, oh, the absolute values is no good. We want to incorporate these deviations and so on. But as I mentioned before, in practice, this is quite hard to work with, right? So the way to get an easier uh, expression of the same formula is to take this and basically to try and untangle it. You know what I'd compare it to? I'd compare it to if you were ever trying to tidy up your room or your desk at home, right? You know how to begin with, you just kind of have to take everything and be, like, lay it all over the floor and then try and get it in some semblance of order. That's what this is going to look like. It's going to look worse before it gets better because we're going to need to expand some stuff. But it does get better, as we saw with the other formula. So here's what we're going to do. Everything that we're dealing with all the way through this work, it's all to do with the sum of however many of these things there are. So we're going to keep on writing the sum of all of this stuff every time that we are doing some algebra. Okay? Now, have a look. If I use this color, here we go. This part in here, x minus mu, all squared, this is just some algebra, right? I could have called this a and b, or, or 5 and 8. They're just numbers, right? So since they're just numbers, I can do with them what I always do, and that's just a something all squared, right? If I were to square this whole thing, square the first, square the last, twice the product, yeah? So let's go ahead and write that. I'm going to get square the first. I'll square the last as well. And then what's in the middle? 2x mu. 2x mu. Now, it is the convention, because x is variable, whereas mu is just a number. Like, it's like, oh, this is it. It's always this in this situation, right? So when we have um, letters like that, pronumerals, we tend to put them first, and then the x's come later, right? Like, if I told you 5x, that would feel more normal than x5. So that's why I've got the x after. That is this part in red, and then everything in there is multiplied by each of the probabilities. Okay, so far so good. Now, because what we're doing is adding up a bunch of different things, what I can do is, again, think back to that cleaning up your desk analogy, right? This is like adding up all of your pieces of paper, and then adding up all of your pens and pencils, and then adding up all of your, I don't know, cables. I have a lot of cables, right? So those three piles are all just tangled together right now. And what I'm going to do is just separate them out. right? So I'm going to get one, two, three piles. Here's the first one. The first one is x squared. And the probability is always there. Probability is multiplied by everything. That's why it's outside the brackets. right? So there is pile number one. Okay? Here comes pile number two. It's still a pile. right? And then it's this minus 2 mu x minus 2 mu x, and then again, because everything's in the brackets, I multiply by the probability. Okay, there's pile number two. And here comes pile number three. Just watch out, see these signs here? That's minus and minus. This is plus, that's why I've got a plus here. It's still a pile, so I'm adding up all these things. Can you tell me what to write next? Yeah, yeah, this is the last part, right? Mu squared, and again, I'm always multiplying by p of x. OK. Now, I told you this would look worse before it gets better. You look in that, and you're like, Mr. Ruth, this is not an improvement. OK? Stay with it. This thing at the front here, this, this should look familiar. Go back to that table where I said to you, hey, just, just add another row to this table for me. right? This thing here is an expected value. It's a thing multiplied by each of the probabilities. But it's not the expected value of x. It's the expected value of x squared. So we've already written this down before, right? So I'm going to write this as e of x squared. That's just adding up everything in that bottom row that we did in that first table. Now what's happening over here? Okay, I can, I can do some tidying up, right? For starters, there's a double negative in there. So I'll factor out one of the negatives. That just leaves me with a plus. And then, this is a bit of a weird move, right? I'm going to have, my metaphor is going to break down here about piles, right? But see how I've got a 2? and a mu here. These are numbers that are the same every single time. So it's like uh, I multiply by 2.92 for the first thing, and then I multiply by 2.92 for the second thing, and I do it over and over again. It's just a number, which means I can factor it out like so. The minus is already turned into a plus. The 2 and the mu are outside. What 
is left in the pile after I take care of the minus sign and the two and the mu? What's left? Good. What's, what's left over is this stuff. Do you see that? That's the stuff I haven't pulled out of the pile. So therefore, I'm going to go x, px, like so. And then off the end here, I'll pull the same trick, except it's a different thing I'm factoring out. This thing here, this is just a number, right? I mean, it's a messy number, but it's still a number. So I'm going to pull that out the front, and then here is the rest of the pile. OK, now this is starting to look a little more reasonable, but you've got to use your brain for this next bit, right? This is done. Just going to leave it. Look at this part here. Look at it really closely. Forget about everything else. Just zoom into this. This is the sum of each value times its probability. Ha haven't we done this before? We've defined this. What is this? That's the expected value. That's just mu, right? So I'm going to do that substitution in a second. And then down the end here, again, forget about everything else. Just look at this part in the box here. I'm adding up. Well, all I'm adding up is all of the probabilities. And every probability distribution, when you add up all the probabilities, you just end up with 1. You can see how taking the piles out has made this a lot simpler. So now, we're pretty much there. Um, this expected value of x squared is hanging out the front, plus 2 mu times mu, like so. And then, oh, hold on a second. Wait, 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 wait. I'm missing something. Oh, I took out this minus sign. I took it out here. It shouldn't be there. Sorry, guys, my bad. That's better. Oh, thanks for forgiving me. I appreciate that. It's very gracious and forgiving of you. OK. Um, I got too excited with my minus signs, right? So that's minus 2 mu squared. What's this? Plus mu squared times 1. That's better. And so we're pretty much there now. You see how these are like terms, right? It's just. It's weird algebra, but it's still just algebra, right? So now I've got this part here. That's what we use that bottom row of the new table for. And then we subtract the square of the expected value. There it is once you get your minus signs right, OK? So all of this work that you can see here, uh, it, it, you don't have to know. It's not in the syllabus. However, you do have to know this is the definition of mu. This always adds up to 1. And then now you don't have to just say, oh, I don't know, this formula just it just is, right? You can see there's reasons behind it. Um, if you missed, if you were not paying attention at the start of this, and you're like, whoa, that's a lot. It is written in your textbook, but I, I kind of like pulling out each of the bits one at a time and knowing what they're equal to. Okay, so there you go.